Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Transfer Target, powered by Snickers Protein. Don't know if that's a good jingle. That's Nicholas to attempt the jingle. One day we're going to write a good jingle for Snickers Protein. Anyway, they're helping fans fall back in love with the game this transfer window. And the fan line is, the Snickers Protein fan line is your chance to get your questions answered by yours truly here every single day on this channel until the end of the transfer window. So all you got to do is tweet at me using at Stephen McInerney and the hashtag fan line and I'll go through some of your questions while also, of course, going through all the big transfer rumours and getting through all the talking points from the world of Manchester City Football Club. Don't forget if you do send in a comment or a video using the hashtag, you do consent for your name and your tweet to be used in the video as well. So, gotta make sure you're cool with that before uh, you commit to sending a hashtag fan line question in. So, we're going to start initially before we get onto the title of the video with a few questions from you guys using the fan line hashtag. And we're going to start with this one initially um, for Lewis Zagni. Uh, Lewis says, Stephen, if it came down to Dortmund wanting Jesus and we get Har Harland in return, would you do it? Um, I would bite their hands off, mate. Basically, what you've asked me there if it, if it came down to Dortmund wanting a good striker who's not very clinical and we get a very good striker who's very clinical for return would you do it yeah yeah I would now obviously the caveat there is that Jesus is very much a um, you know a commodity that we know we know what he's good at we know what he's bad at and sometimes it is better the devil you know and all that kind of stuff but yes I think Haaland has got a much higher ceiling but air limit than Gabriel Jesus in terms of what we need from a striker. Jesus is a very good player, but I think what we need right now is someone who can just be an absolute beast in front of goal. Someone who can smack that ball really hard and put it in the top corner. And Jesus shows bits of doing that every now and then. And just a little bit of a disclaimer, I am a Jesus fan. I really like him. I think he's a good footballer. But I think the one thing we're crying out for is not someone who's great at working and all that kind of stuff can run, it can link up and play on the left. We're, we're crying out for just someone who's a freak in front of goal. And uh, Haaland is just big, he's tall, he's fast, he absolutely lives for scoring goals. He's got that same hunger for goals that Cristiano Ronaldo's got, and that's what we need. So if it came down to it, yeah, um, obviously it would kind of slightly kind of handicap us, because then we need another striker, presuming Aguero gets old. But I would take that risk, because Haaland, for me, um, he's the kind of person you take big risks for, because he's that good a player. Lewis, big love for the question, mate. On to the next question. This comes from Robbie, Football Robbie. Um, big love to Robbie as well. Says, um, realistically, who do you think would take Mendy and how much would we get from the current market? Um, well, mate... Um Realistically, I think a few clubs would give, take him if it was really cheap, but I reckon he'd probably go back to France. I mean, I've got a feeling, you know, maybe a French team, I don't know who, your Monaco's or your Lyon's or someone like that, or your Marseille's. Someone like that would take him back on loan, I reckon, initially. The only thing we're going to struggle with is given his wages and given his reputation at the moment, his injuries and all that kind of stuff, we're going to struggle to sell Mendy. So we, if we tried to sell him now, I'd be surprised if we got five to 10 million for him. I'd be surprised genuinely because it's Manchester City and unfortunately we've got a proven track record of selling plays um, for very cheap. Even very good plays for very cheap like Dzeko for example or even Carlos Tevez and people like that. So um, it's, it'd be very difficult. I do think and I've heard some rumours myself personally that Manchester City have kind of reached their end of the limit really and they're tether with Mendy and we would move him on if we get a chance in the summer. So I guess we'll see man. I guess we'll have to wait and see in the summer. But realistically yeah, a French team, maybe maybe someone else, maybe, I don't know, uh, someone in Germany will take him on loan or someone like that. Um, and he'll, I guarantee you by the way, when he goes on loan and moves somewhere else with uh, fresh scenery, scenery, fresh uh, fresh scenery and a new environment, what, what's in his form again almost certain that's how these things work typically man city thank you Robbie. big love to you and the final question of the day from you guys using the hashtag fan line is from bobby cash bobby wrote with the reports that Edin Dzeko wants out of Roma, would it be realistic that Pep would be in for him as a short-term squad player? I know it's a pipe dream, but we love to cross the ball for some reason to at least get someone on the end of them. Uh, Bobby's logic is undeniable, and I think we'd all love for a big emotional return from Edin Dzeko. Getting on the end of those crosses... Uh, Bagging 10 15 goals as Manchester City won the league um, and maybe went far in the Champions League. <clears throat> Can I see it happening though? Unfortunately, I can't. Things like this seem to be. Um we seem to be relying on other players moving and all that kind of stuff and I would love it I would absolutely love it and to be honest it would make sense in many ways for Dzeko to come in and do something of a Cavani from Manchester City uh, like Cavani's doing at United I just can't see it unfortunately I mean there's normally noise around these kind of things stranger things have happened but there's an element of pride and I don't think City are particularly um, 
uh, open to bringing players back like that. I mean, I mean, Angelino was a slight change, but I think that was in view for profit at some point. But um, but I reckon it's a pride thing. Yeah, I don't think Jacko would. Uh, Pass up the chance, maybe, but I got at the same time. I don't think uh, Guardiola would take him. I'm not sure he's a Guardiola kind of player, um, even though it makes sense in many ways for me. Um, I just can't see Manchester City doing it. Bobby, though, I hope I'm wrong. I would love Xhaka to come back. Um, I think we'd all forget that he was touch was a bit poor every now and then. But as long as he scored a few goals, I think we'd all be very, very happy. Thank you very much for all the questions. Don't forget, I'll be answering three more tomorrow on the video. So make sure you get your questions at Stephen McInerney using the hashtag fanline, and you could be in this video tomorrow. But now let's move on to the next big story. And this is about a big splash in the transfer market. And this comes from Jack Gorn over the Daily Mail. And uh, Jack... Um, does have ties close to Man City from what I can tell. And he uh, wrote that City have been saving up for a major splash in the transfer market. Uh, transfer market, Whether that is either Haaland, Messi, both or neither, they will strengthen. And apparently we see it as vital that we uh, address our attack next summer, which is very exciting. Everyone loves big emotive words. And to be honest, I do think this is actually true. I do think Man City have a veritable war chest for next season, that they do plan to spend big on the summer. And we are going to see uh, a big striker come in. Who will it be? I don't really know, but I do think the likes of Haaland and Messi are very much on their list, and it isn't unreasonable. It might not, it probably will happen, of course, but it's very much an aim. And if there's an aim and it's a goal, then it can happen and it's possible, which is obviously a reason to be very, very positive. And I think the attack, um, City know that they're wasteful in front of goal. They like Gabriel Jesus, but they know obviously he's not super reliable in front of goal. Obviously, Aguero, we all love him, but. There are, unfortunately, big questions about Aguero's long-term fitness and future at Manchester City Football Club. Whether you agree or not with that, we can't deny the fact that he's basically not even been a, um, uh, a squad player this season so far for Man City. He's not really been an adult at all. And we have to hope that this is not a sign of things to come. And City will be very cautious about that. So um, I do think City are planning to maybe break this little habit of 50, 60 million pound plays and actually go for the big bucks. And that's big bucks, of course, but the big, big bucks. You know, like go into the big boy league with spending that way in terms of individual transfers and maybe go up towards your 100 plus million to someone like Haaland. I would love it. I would absolutely love it. And I would love all the tears from rival fans as well if Manchester City pulled this off. I think this is a true story for what it's worth in terms of City will be aggressive in the market next win, uh, next summer. And I can't wait personally. Uh, fingers crossed. We go it, go big for our left back midfield and our attack. It'd be wonderful. And finally, um, a little bit of academy news. Um, Nathaniel Ogbeta has left Manchester City and joined Shrewsby on an 18-month deal. If you don't know much about Nathaniel Ogbeta, that's probably understandable. He's a 19-year-old uh, left back currently. Initially, when I first saw him coming through for the under-18s, he was highly rated, actually. Um, he was playing occasionally as a defensive midfielder and occasionally as a centre-back and often as a centre-back. Played an awful lot for England youth teams uh, and he was very, very good. But unfortunately, he hasn't really passed. Uh, he hasn't really developed massively. Uh, he's a good player, but he hasn't kicked on. Hopefully, he'll do really well over at Shrewsbury. So, good luck to him, of course. Um, McCann was starting to run out right now. So, fingers crossed I can get through this. Uh, Beto, though, is a good player. Not the fastest, not the strongest, but he's good. And hopefully, he'll make a career for himself over at Shrewsbury. Big love and good luck to Nathaniel Beta. Guys, thank you for watching. Big love to everyone who's got the questions in so far don't forget to hit the subscribe button and go and watch the match preview as ever thanks to all the patrons as well gonna carry on talking until the camera goes off if it cuts off right now it's because it went flat but don't forget you can get your questions in using the hashtag fan line uh, once again powered by snickers protein jingle nicola powered by snickers protein. beautiful in a bit <laughs>